What's going on, everybody? It is DJ CJ, one of your co-hosts for Dad's Office Podcast by Bros Giving. Welcome to another installment of the Dad's Office Podcast by Bros Giving. It's DJ CJ, Uncle Brent, Captain Fox, yep. The Fox, and The Archer, Rich McMaster, bringing you content on lifestyle, young adult living, comedy, girls, and just about anything that you can think of. Thanks for tuning in with us. Anything. Got a lot of great stuff planned for you guys in terms of uh, new content coming out on Instagram oh, and yeah. Twitter, all that Big kind things. of stuff, Big things. and YouTube. And again, guys, if you guys want to see anything said at the beginning of the episode here, uh, send a comment into Instagram, drop a comment on YouTube, tell us what you think. If you want to be a guest, get out on here. Not very picky, man. We just want to uh, get you on here. If you got a story, if you have a story, come on and share it with us, you man. Just love to talk. Know. Super excited. Well, I love to talk, or we love to talk. No, if you just love to talk, come on. <laughs> yeah, get on here, something. man. Just say anything. We 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 got a we got a problem with talking. I should say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what? definitely her, more of a CJ problem. Her, I have a problem with talking. So so obviously you guys remember my uh, mic'd up video from Campbell, right? Oh, yeah, I saw yeah, it. Dude. I saw it. Classic. If you haven't, if you haven't seen the mic'd up video funny, from yeah. me when I was at Campbell, go dig through Campbell Baseball's uh, Instagram and you'll find it on there. Yeah. And, and I was singing to myself and everything, and people were commenting or they're just talking to I don't know some of you guys, or just some of my some of my friends from back home here, mm -hmm. and they're saying, "Why does CJ talk to himself so much?" And then Alex commented on one of the things on one of, on, on the post. He goes, "Oh man, I've been CJ's been doing this his whole life, man. I'm so happy that everyone else could see it." <laughs> yeah, it was like the perfect representation of yourself. I and mean, we all know CJ by being that guy. And then you know Campbell mics you up. It's like he's still that guy. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because someone at practice the other day walked up to Logan and said, "Like yo, why is CJ always like singing and talking to himself?" And it's funny because I don't think I do it that much. Mm -hmm. I thought I've been much more chilled out since I got back home from Campbell since the summer started, and especially since yeah, you know yeah, but... starting baseball again this fall. But I guess not. I guess I'm still wound like a top. But I guess that's pretty good. We can make our own game show about it or something. No, nah, you've been more calm of late for sure. Have I? Yeah, maybe I don't know, it's just because like I don't know. Now you're playing better too. I feel like now you're yeah, more calm no, no, definitely, you. definitely, for and sure. the environment that you're in definitely has something to but do with that. I was gonna say that's just so true for like anything in life. I mean, when you do something like calm with like and you're just relaxed, you don't care. Like I always find better results when I go into something and like I care for it and that I have passion for it, but I'm not gonna let it like destroy my mood or whatever. I feel like I always go into stuff better that way. And it, it definitely. And it's kind of more so after you've. I think it's hard to just go into something that and just be relaxed about it, especially if it's something that that you're new to or that you have to work at. Because my philosophy was always all right work super hard at something and never let up and that was my philosophy at northampton and campbell but now that i'm back i'm like all right man mm -hmm. you've done just about everything you can to try and achieve the goal in terms of succeeding at baseball if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but taking yeah, that pressure off myself has definitely has definitely been a little bit better and even with starting the podcast it definitely just thinking hey we're starting a little bit out of time we're going to start putting out some more content roll it out nice and slow it's definitely become more fun even though we haven't been doing it that long but i'm having a great time doing it so Mm -hmm. so, now, sure. so now that you are home playing baseball, you haven't really touched on that much. Um, you said the pressure is taking off, so you are performing better? You just want to talk about how, yeah, how uh, your games are going, exhibitions? All right, things? yeah, I could talk about that a little bit. So definitely being at Campbell, and I don't know if you guys have seen uh, – all the Instagram posts that they've been putting out, but our pitchers are like really setting the world on fire. And when I got there my junior year, we definitely had a great class of incoming transfers that pitch very well. The freshmen now and then the chances that they got like we had a bunch of freshmen last year that took home all american awards and we have one one sophomore now that's up to 98 we have a bunch of other sophomores that sit 94 to 95 and then top 96 so just going into inner squads every single mm -hmm. day and facing that and again not an excuse to not do well but it was definitely harder and now you kind of just ease off the competition just a little bit and our pitchers are still really good but it's just just a little bit easier and then in terms of taking pressure off yourself when you're in an environment like that where everyone's trying to get to the next step and the next step at the division one level especially when you're mid-major and it's the same for basketball and football like it's almost impossible to make that step so you have to do everything in your power to be able to change it and that just means everything we were doing on the field uh on a daily basis whether it was in the weight room in the morning and then what you were doing at practice and then what you were yeah. required to do not required to do but you wanted to do in your additional work after that 
So especially when you when you're not succeeding, it definitely drags on a bit. And the mental health, I think, of a lot of guys is put into question yeah, a little I mean, bit. A lot of the time, it's just like control what you can control, and everything else will fall into place. So whether it's sports or relationships or effort at work, worry about you and showing up, hundred percent effort, giving it all you got, not letting other like because bad stuff's gonna happen to you and adversity is gonna hit you. And it's more about how you react and yeah, absolutely. the action happening to you. Because, like, you can control how you react. You can't control what's going to happen to you. And, like, that's yeah. something I've had to learn of late is, like, watching my reaction. Because, like, right away I hear bad news and I'm like, I want to snap. I want to freak out. I'm like, yo, like, F this shit. That's ridiculous. Like, how could you do that? And in the moment, you're just all wound up. And I just think you need to give it time. Let things play out. You, that's out of your control. You didn't know that person was going to do that to you. So it's like, okay, I didn't know they are going to do that. I can control my response. I can keep doing me. Like, don't let people hold you down like that. And you want to talk about something similar to that? Or no, just to put more emphasis on it, that's something that definitely comes with age. And the more... Yeah. And one of the mottos at Campbell was um, to build through adversity. So we were always talking about adversity. Our coaches were, and then as a joke in the group chat, a bunch of times we're just like, all right, man, more adversity, more stuff we don't want to do, but we're going to do it because it's going to make us better as a team. Mm-hmm. But you want to compare me to my freshman year at Northampton and to my you know, redshirt junior, senior year at Campbell, and it's a world of difference. It's like you hear bad news, and it's just like, all right, what, well, who who really cares, man? It's just something yeah, that we have to, to work, do. Yeah. So you what, know, are you going to sit here and complain about it? You know, it's pretty uh, funny about this whole topic is um, I was talking to a coworker today, and sometimes when you tell a customer something, they react in a really – negative way and you know they kind of give you a hard time mm-hmm. so my coworker goes i wish there was just one day out of the year you can act that same way towards you know mm-hmm. the customer mm-hmm. and treat them how sometimes you oh, are treated. dude at the car wash <laughs> over four years so i worked there like from 14 to 18 yeah oh my god put some mambo grease in it people said the craziest shit to me <laughs> the craziest shit like how are you even aware? Dude, tell, you even, tell him yeah. about the pimp. Tell him about the pimp. Oh, the this pimp, is bro. Great. This is the best car wash story ever. So, this dude this dude pulls up, or this chick pulls up, this pregnant woman in like a beat up Honda Civic. Like the thing was beat to crap. So, it goes through the wash, and it's not a brushless wash. So, the brush hit her mirror in and knocked it off. <laughs> Keep in mind the coach. Wait, how they knock it off? It's a brush, oh, dude. It's dude. You have you have no idea yeah, all the I stuff that even, can happen I in a car wash, into, man. We'll be here for hours, but um, so her mirror gets knocked off. Her car comes out of the wash. She's like, "What the hell happened?" So we're like, "Oh yeah, we're sorry, you know." So we kind of like tried gluing it back on and uh, <laughs> like just holding it there, and it was not it was not folding. So we're like, "Fill out an insurance claim. It'll probably be a hundred bucks to fix." Yeah, and we'll cover it. That was a problem. Let me tell you. So Mind you, the like, mirror, there's no way the mirror costs a hundred bucks yeah, to the get car fixed. was maybe worth five hundred. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> top it out a yeah. thousand. But on a serious note. So she's like, I'm calling my baby daddy. Not her husband, uh-huh. not her boyfriend, her baby daddy she's calling. So we're like, I'm like, all right, whatever. Like this happens this kinda happens a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so um she calls him. This dude comes ripping into the car watching like, like dude. <laughs> It's a hundred and ten thousand dollar gold and gray Rolls Royce, <laughs> dude. Pimping this dude comes in like skid like pulls in front of the tunnel of the wash and no one can come through. Like skids the skids the tire out like, <laughs> and um gets out of the car. He's like, who the f I need to talk to? We we're gonna figure this shit out right now. This is like right now. So I'm like, oh crap. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like fifteen hundred ten pounds soaking wet. Was it that long ago that this happened? Oh, yeah, dude. It was the longest. So, um, he's screaming, freaking out. And this kid, this one coworker had only worked with us for a week and he was also from the city. So he comes up, he's like, he's like, I'm gonna handle this fool for you. I was like, all right. Yeah. Like, that's fine. So he goes up to the guy. He's like, I'm thinking he's going to be like, Sarah, calm down. Like, relax. He goes up to him and he's like, we're not giving you your effing money back. Like, get the hell out of here. So I'm like, oh shit! Like, what is about to go yeah, where's down? Yeah, where's the boss right now? So they're so they're screaming, right? So this dude, this they're in an argument, talking about fighting each other and shit. And um, he he goes to him, he goes, "You and your partner are both gonna get popped." Talking about me too. I'm like, oh <laughs> no. no. I'm like, dude. So then I was like, guys, relax. Like, we'll call the police and like it'll be fine. So I just I call the police because they're just screaming at each other, like arguing. At at one point, he's like, they're saying each other's addresses. So yeah. they were like, um, 
112 Brooklyn Street, New York. And he was like, oh, yeah, 112 Hoodville. And I was going to be like, don't say mine, please. <laughs> 112 Shine Rock Road. Yeah, me, me, me. And uh, so, like, yeah, they're like, yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. Like, yeah, 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 the usual. So the cops come. He, the guy, the cop talks to the guy and it calming down. He eventually moves his car. And then he comes up to me afterwards and he's like, yo, come over here and I'll tell you something. He's like, you? He dabs me up. He's like, me and you are cool. He goes, I like you. I like how you, he's like, I like how in the face of like adversity and people coming at you, you stay calm. He's like, but your partner? He going to get killed doing that crap. <laughs> oh, I was man. like, uh, it's not my partner. I've known yeah. this kid for maybe a week, but uh, yeah, 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 I got you, dude. So he was like, yeah, respect, homie. I'll be back. I was like, no. No, you don't need to come back. It's all right. But uh, yeah, that's just like one of the many crazy stories from that place, dude. You don't want to put a hundred and ten thousand dollar Rolls Royce in the car wash. You know, you know, in no. any car wash, man, you got to wash that by hand. Yeah, no, no shot. Just uh, touching on that story. So when we were in high school, um, we went to Giant one one night really late. I don't know if you guys were there. I think Bobby might have been there. It was a oh, bunch of guys. It was like me, Gifford, Matt Breen. Vinny Joel. Oh, I know what story uh, you're talking about. Oh, I was yeah, there. Yeah, we were all this there. this giant, like, triangle, like, pyramid stack of, like, toilet paper. And oh, I guess great. The, Joel pushes oh, somebody, I think Joel pushes Vinny into the <laughs> stack. Oh, yeah, yeah. He knocks it all down. And then. Jokingly. Yeah, they jokingly. Just, they just sprint out of giant. And of Classic. course, we're the friends. We're the you know we're the second ones there. We mm. didn't leave. So I we, was grocery shopping legitimately yeah, yeah, at the time yeah. for, for <laughs> hanging out that night. I was getting like pizza rolls and <laughs> what's pizza and gluten free snacks. Yeah. So the the manager, the night manager at Giant, like comes out. He sees me, Bobby, Matt, and Gifford, and he's just talking to us. He's like, I don't want to see this again. I don't want you guys back here mm-hmm. past like nine o'clock. You're, you're like banned yeah, from here. Hold on. But so, there's other stuff so that happened before banners? that. So our group was banned from Giant after nine p.m. But or like something like that. How yeah. would they even know? I forgot about that. <laughs> well, like, you're missing a key part of the story. So when Joel pushed Vinny into the stack, Vinny did this overly dramatic like fall, and Vinny acted like he was walking. Like they staged this whole thing. Oh, yeah. So he's he's acting like he's walking by this thing, and Joel comes over and pushes him, and he does this full on back flop into the into the that's stack right, right, yeah. and the and the night manager was in the same aisle he's like oh my god sir oh my god sir are you okay he's like are you okay i'm calling the cops yeah, he's, and he's like no no you don't gotta call the cops just kids being kids because he didn't want it he didn't want to get copper like staging this whole thing so i think Vinny left yeah right Vinny Vinny yeah. left the giant that night and then the night manager is like talking to us in a circle and we're, you know we're just like yes sir yes sir like he smells like absolutely stone so like yeah i don't yeah, think you're yeah, gonna yeah. call the cops at the time but um he's like yeah he's like i like this guy and he like points at gifford who hasn't said a word the whole time he's, just yes. he's like, I, yes, really, I, remember he's like that. I really like this guy i remember that <laughs> i really like this, and this guy. whole time like i've looked past cj and everybody in the back i see um mariana's mom there and it's like we first started dating i'm like oh jeez i'm like oh, she's gonna see me like <laughs> oh i forgot and, you yeah, saw her that's right. she's gonna see me and this group of friends getting <laughs> banned from giant and this <laughs> night manager it was, the whole thing was a mess but it was just so funny and i'm walking back towards him i had just finished grocery shopping i saw this whole thing go down and, and all of a sudden i'm about to go check out i went to go get more stuff because i'm like all right i'm not dealing with it i actually yeah. got to get snacks for tonight and Matt is walking at me, and no one else is like, "Dude, we're getting kicked out. You got, we just got to go." I'm like, "No, I just spent 35 minutes walking through the aisles, picking all this stuff up. Like, let me just pay for it, and we can get out of here." Then he goes, "Nah, dude, we're getting kicked out, man. We're getting kicked out." So I was mad at that After point. Nine. Again, the stuff that made me mad was it didn't take a whole lot to make me mad back in the day, especially when everyone was over. We did some funny. Yeah, dude, oh, we, yeah. Was that the night that we went ding dong ditching in that neighborhood? No, I think that was a different night, but. That was Alex's first thing about that. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. we used to do some funny stuff, especially, and there's definitely a history with Vinny and Giant. He, like, there's so many times he prank called Giant. Oh, yeah. you remember that? Oh, he, he, had, he had the blue banana amazing. story. Mm-hmm. He would call yeah. Giant and he would plead to them that his bananas turned blue. My bananas <laughs> turned blue. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I got these blue bananas. You remember the lady was like, oh. Oh, oh my god <laughs> it's just like yeah. I don't know what to do about that I'm sorry sir and then yeah. he would just take it to a whole nother level yeah. and he would be asking he would be asking for like a refund a whole yeah. bananas are worth what 72 cents Yeah, is what we paid Dude, for him for today speaking of the car wash I just got reminded because you guys know the show you 
Oh, yeah. yeah season with, three. With, like, the serial killer. Yeah. yeah. So, I think I had an interaction with serial killer at the car wash this one time. Let me, no. tell you, let me tell you about this dude, yeah. Same week Halloween Kills comes out. Yeah, so, it's like, I don't know, I'm probably, like, 17 at this point, and it's, like, winter night, dude. No one's come to wash for hours, and, um... This guy comes through. It's like 6.30. It's pitch black out. Middle of January. Yeah. He's like, oh, which wash do you recommend? And I'm like, uh. <laughs> None. And it's 6.30. Yeah, it's yeah, cold. Yeah, I'm go like, home. just go home, dude. So he's like, oh, yeah, I'll just, I'll take the $8. Thank you, sir. And I was like, okay, I'm like, whatever. Do you have backup here? here? Are you here by yourself? No, it's just me. It's just me. Oh, that's scary. So he's going through the wash. And I'm on my phone on the counter, you know, scrolling through. And he comes out of the wash. And at that time, we don't do towel drives like past six. At the time, we didn't. I don't know if they do now. But uh, he's banging on the window. I look over, and he's there like, oh, come drive my car. So I'm like, uh, okay. And so I started drying his car out there. He's like walking behind me, like staring at me and shit. So I'm about to toss you in there. Yeah. So I'm like, please don't kill me. Like, this is crazy. (laughs) But you got to drive the car. It's customer service, yeah, right. baby. So he was like, oh, yeah, I got a nice tip waiting for you if you can let me inside and get money out of the drawer. So I was like, I can do that. She so goes, oh, yeah, I'll just go in with you. I was like, no, 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 just stay outside. He goes, oh, no, no, Like, I just want to make sure um, I can tip you good or whatever. I forget, I forget why I let him inside. I should definitely not have let him inside. But let him inside. You actually let him inside? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks Dude, like he's trying to rob you. He didn't, want, he didn't want him to kill you. He's so. like, Remember, he's a serial killer. He's super convincing. Yeah. <laughs> He's super sure, he's like, he said, he's like Ted Bundy. <laughs> whatever he said to me, I was like, oh, that makes fucking sense. <laughs> so he, I let him inside. I get the money out. He tips me two dollars, so not a good tip. Yeah. So he goes, uh, "What's your number?" And I'm like, "What the?" Fuck? So I give, I write down a bullcrap number. He goes, "So you work here often, huh?" I'm like, "Pretty much every day. You'll find me here." Yeah. He was like, "Nice." Real nice. And I was like, all right, like, yeah, you can go. Like, I'm like, Sarah, we got to close up. We got to, I, I got to go. I got to get out of here. Yeah. He goes, oh, what's your name again? And I just said some random name. I think I said, like, Brendan or something. And why'd goes, you make, why'd you make it close to your regular name? Yeah, he easily could like, mistaken Brendan. You're like, remember, like this guy is convincing you're me. Like, you're like, you're like, Brendan. <laughs> you guys, you guys are forgetting that this is a trained seal yeah, killer yeah, for all yeah, I know. Yeah, so right, right. he's, I'm, I'm a 17 year old kid, man. I'm prime beat. <laughs> But, uh, freaking, so he, he goes to close the door and he goes, it was real nice talking to you, Brendan. He goes, I hope I can see you again soon. <laughs> Holy oh moly. And shut the door and he's like literally singing. He's like, la 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 la, walking to his car. Dude, Dude. I fucking watched him speed out of the driveway, lock the door, ran to the back. Dude, oh my gosh. Freaking close, close, close. Kept my, car, kept my phone light on the whole time, like facing outside. But I was like, dude, that guy's a freak. Yeah. And I haven't heard, I haven't seen it, his face on the news or anything, but this dude was freaking weird, man. I don't, have, I don't have anything to that extreme, but the one night we were closing, and um, I'm just bringing in, like, the chairs from out front and, like, the trash can from out front. Uh-huh. And the parking lot, is there's, like, one car there, and I thought it was empty. So, you know, I'm just, like, dragging this tractor in, my back's towards the front door, and we already walked the aisles, the store was empty. Uh-huh. And then I... I like I put the brake in the track there. I closed the front door and I turn around. There's this guy and his son in the store, and I'm like, "Wait, no. Ooh, dude, how did creepy. he get in here?" And nobody knew how he got in here. And he must have like they must have ran behind me. I swear to God, like mm-hmm. when the door was open, I was pulling in the tractor. They mm-hmm. must have sneaked behind me, but I got in. I'm like, "Okay, we pulled all the drawers." Like, all this guy wants is, like, a candy bar mm-hmm. and, like, a couple screws. Like, but that's the other thing. Like, how did he get here? Why, considering Turkey Hill is right next to you that sells candy, Yeah. like, why do they want to go to Steel's at 9 at night for a candy bar? Like, mm, it was Yeah, weird. that is really weird. Now you, now you bring weird. it up. Dude, this I didn't see, freaky, man. This was freaky. Here. I didn't see anything wrong with what he was saying at first. And I'm like, you know what? That is weird. Like because Turkey he, Hill is right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, think about it. Even if he was that guy in that car and he saw us closing up and me, like, dragging the chairs back in mm-hmm. you think he would have said like oh hey sir like you guys still open can i get something real quick but i think they just even like, that sne- i think they man. just like sneaked behind me one, second he looked away yeah, yeah. once you close the doors or like at the car wash case put the cones out as, yeah. as you said like that was it like i always got weird feelings of people pulling up after that mm-hmm. 
Cause it's never good, dude. The last the, customer of the day is never good, man. The worst never is uh, when I'm like sweeping That's the floor true. and there's like people like knocking on the door during like a mm-hmm. storm. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, we were open for twelve hours. Like, right, you had your chance. So yeah, yeah. I mean, why do you got to pull up? Right, I'm about to go tomorrow. Home. Yeah. Oh, but I work tomorrow. Oh. Like, what do you, people expect you to like twenty four seven everything? It's crazy. Could have came like ten hours ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. dude, that's yeah, dude, that's so nuts. Considering I always used to close at the car wash, but I never used to get sketched out. I just sit there on my phone and kind of just put my one, feet up. One and chill. time too, I was in the basement there. Not to deter anyone from like working at a car washer there, but uh, had a lot of benefits too. Anyway, I'm in the basement. Keep there's, mind, a though, there's, dude, there's a basement in I worked there for four yeah well don't, it's where alright because so the oil have, shop's on there too yes yeah, so you have the oil shop oh, so okay. they lift up the car and then they go under there to work under yeah, the car yeah. and all yeah. that stuff so keep on I worked there for four I closed for four years dude so I, I was there a lot of nights alone like whatever and um the one night I'm down there on the ladder turning off the one likes and you use a ladder and I hear Brent and I'm like turn around I'm like like I gotta get out of here. So I stumbled on the ladder. I turn off the other light. I hear Brent again. So I'm like, like please, please get me out of here. Yeah. So I freaking sprinted upstairs, like locked the door, like locked the door, got out of there, sped out. Didn't, didn't even look behind because I don't even do. Wait, I get that freaked out. Are you kidding me? No, dude. Like that was it, and that that was it. But I do. I swear to God, because the first Brent, I was like, because people had always joked to me that the place is haunted. So I. Anytime, Dude, that is so Anytime I heard something once, weird. I was just like, yeah, it's my mind like, being paranoid. Yeah. But twice. 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 Uh, I was like, yeah. mm. Dude, that stuff, I mean, I'm really religious, but that stuff, whether I was religious or not, is 100% real. Oh, yeah. And we hear all these stories. So my mom's mom, so my grandmother passed away when my mom was only 19. Mm-hmm. And she had a story when we were living at our old house, right? The original, the big house. She was talking about how she was home alone one time and she said she heard her Ugh, do I get chills it's just oh, weird geez. man and you know like it was a, it's a traumatic experience <laughs> it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, she bro, said in one time her and Olivia were both home and they said they heard you but you were at you were at school or something that's right I remember that because yeah. I came home and she was like all t- freaked out and I, tweaking I, what like, was Whoa. weirder was I did come home like five minutes later like off the school bus yeah or I remember that yo remember when we got robbed yeah Yo, so one time CJ and I, what was that when they in? took the baseball stuff off your front porch? No, no that's a different thing. Oh, we did, we've been robbed five times. <laughs> CJ, what? How old were you when we got robbed and you were in the bathroom? Ten. So CJ was like ten. We got we got off the maybe, school bus one time. Maybe ten. My dad left the garage door open with like a bunch of like mowing equipment or whatever, and uh, CJ goes to the bathroom, and I'm like seven at the time. I'm like watching TV and I look out the window. I see these dudes pull up in a pickup. These two dudes, like grizzly looking dudes, and. Uh, Start going to our garage. So I don't, I'm like, oh, it's probably my dad like telling his friends he could borrow something. So I go up to CJ and I'm like, CJ, is anyone supposed to be coming? And he's like, no, like, no one's supposed to be here. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, he's like, no, no one's supposed to be here. So I call my mom and she's like, yeah, no one's supposed to be at the house right now. Like, there's no one coming to get anything. So I'm like, oh crap. Like, I'm seven years old. So I started like kind of like, like a pants sack or whatever. So I run over, lock the door. I stand outside. CD's in the bathroom door with it locked still. He never even let me in the bathroom. I don't know if you remember that. Well, I was going to the bathroom. Yeah, but I was, <laughs> dude, yeah. Great brother here. You got to okay. pick, pick and choose your battles here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I'll stand on that. I'll die on that hill. But uh, I so, didn't believe you. Well, I didn't believe dude, you. I, I like, literally what? stood outside the bathroom door, clinching, just hoping no one came in the house. And no one did. And mom and dad came home a minute after they had left. Cause they, they got in, they dipped, but like that was crazy. We literally had, and then there. and well, yeah, they took my dad's oh, leaf yeah. blower and something uh-huh. else. Oh, like wow. my dad literally came home and said, "Dude, it was guys, freaky, what'd man. you do with the leaf blower?" And we're like, "Dad, you probably left it somewhere." And he said, "No, it guys, it was right here. Dude, I was using like, it before ooh. I left this morning. That's why the garage door was open." Thank God it was like only that, but like we literally were robbed. See, you know, yeah. when we were just home, like That's ten weird, seven years bro. old, dude. Because yeah, keep in mind there was no, it looked like no one was home because both my parents' cars were gone. Yeah, yeah so the garage was just wide open, so they just rolled in. And from the road, you can at that old house. You could look in, and you could see because we had three garage doors and a bunch and of windows. If, and yeah. since the one was open, you could see at the other two panels where, or the other two spots where there would be cars, and there were none. See, that's ballsy though, because there's right. one way in and one way out. <laughs> but it's the, a circle. But the leaf blower was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. If yeah, your you mom pulls in, they're done. Like, because there's trees right. on both well, sides. Right, and she our, just sits there. And calls the our cops. mom came home like she was home like that because she started freaking yeah. out. I don't know. Did the police ever come? I don't. I don't think so. I think they reported like, "Hey, missing yeah. leaf blower," or that whatever. But then we weren't. You. But we were not allowed to stay at home alone after that. When we got home from school, we had to go. We went. We ended up going to my mom's daycare, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, <laughs> and hang it. So yeah, that was in fifth grade because I remember she made us get go on bus sixty, and it was the la- I remember the last stop on that entire bus run was her daycare. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I it remember chilling hard. in the back. It was us, Justin. Remember him? Justin mm-hmm. M. I want to say his last name. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was. And I know Brent has definitely has some more paranormal stories. Yeah. Let's save it. We can save them for oh, dude, Halloween. You know, you, you, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Say, all right, let's, let's say one. Say one. This is just funny. It's not scary at all. So once I'm freshman, you're having a bonfire at the house. <laughs> the CJ does this one. And this chick. I think I was a bodyguard. <laughs> no, I've you, I, I, with CJ. Yeah, I, know, I think this one was actually like four seniors Me, too. So you, yeah. Cassidy, this one, James. Yeah. No, that's it. That was eighth grade. That was eighth grade. Oh, but, thank uh, God. Okay. I was like, why are you telling that story? That no, shouldn't really no. be oh, that's, Yeah, that'll, whatever. <laughs> that'll never be brought up. But, um, so freshman year. I know what you're talking about. My one friend that's a girl, she's like, oh, come in your basement right now. It's like really freaking me out. It's like really scaring me. Oh, you know, oh, at like, the new uh, house. Yeah, yeah. At the new. Oh yeah. So I go for the fire yeah. I'm like, oh shit, like what's going on? So I go down oh, there. Oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> I go down there and she's just sitting on the couch down there. She's like, Yeah, it's like really spooky down here. Like oh, you should come. Wow, I really <laughs> got you, bro. <laughs> she goes, You should come help me. So I was like I look around the basement. I'm like so naive, dude. I'm yeah. so naive. She's playing. And yeah, so uh I was like, dude, there's nothing down here. So she's like, Oh no, like yeah, like she comes on the couch with me, like, in case there is something. And I'm like did you catch on at that point? No. Oh, Brent, Brent, Brent had no idea. <laughs> this is, this this is going on. She's yeah. throwing you a bone. Yeah, but. dude. Uh, give a dog a bone, but I doesn't. I wasn't barking. I was like, or wasn't biting. I was, yeah, turned around. I was like, there's no one here. Like, can you stop doing that? Like, and I literally went upstairs. Dude. I was such an idiot. I went back to the I'm party. I'm not going to lie. Like, I probably would have been that so oblivious, oh, dude. Dude, 14-year-old Brent, you couldn't tell him anything, dude. He was. You can still tell me anything, and I'll probably believe it. <laughs> If I walked down there and there was a like Miss America was sitting down there, she'd be like, "I just saw a ghost." I'd be like, "Uh, no, it's playing a trick on your mind. Shut up and don't call me down here again." And I go back upstairs yeah, and do what I'm doing. But I don't know why Miss America would be in my basement. I wouldn't be down there with her, just you know, hanging out, playing Yahtzee or something, or backgammon, Yahtzee. something. <laughs> Any something uh, that's just a good time. Anything crazy at Jersey Mike's happened, Bobby? Any crazy stories? Nothing really that crazy, but every night, like when we're closing at nine, everything will be clean. The grill will be clean. Mm-hmm. Slicers clean. People walk in like eight fifty five. Yeah, you yeah. have to. You have to serve. I'm them. guilty. Oh. You have to serve. Richie did. Me, it me and Gifford pulled up once. It was like five of, and uh, oh. like Bobby, Chipotle <laughs> cheesesteak, <laughs> cheesesteak. <laughs> Something messy too. Something that they gotta cook. Not even a yeah. cold it's side. A, it's a different type of pain when your friends pull up to your work and yeah. be like in the auction and I mean, a bunch of stuff. Dude. Imagine if they ordered a gluten free sandwich. Oh, those are the worst. Dude, if I, <laughs> there's, the worst. If there's one thing that I just never do is order a gluten free sub from Jersey Mike's because I used to walk in there. Bobby wouldn't even be working because Bobby was good about it, man. And he and they glu- <laughs> he'd always throw in some gluten free cookies it. for me and all that. But you'd walk in and you'd be like, "All right, can I have a Chipotle cheese steak on a gluten free?" On gluten free bread, and the whole place, everyone working there, just go. Sets everything back like ten minutes because you got to like sanitize it, wipe it down, and everything, and then you got to get the bread out. (laughs) But I don't, I don't have celiac, so I would literally say, guys, you do not have to clean it. They're like, we'll get fired if we don't clean it. I'm like, all right, man. I felt so bad. So the only time I ever did it again is when we had DoorDash or whatever. I would just order it, so I wouldn't have to deal with the people there. Yeah. What. Did you ever hear about the uh, great negotiation at Jersey Mike's? No. No. So what I, pull is up, I pull up a gift for I'm not going to say the guy's name, but it's like, <laughs> I guess he was a manager at the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Bobby's there. He's cool. I'm like, yeah, I'll take that uh, giant Chipotle cheesesteak. And we're like going down the line. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I got, a, I got a pack of M&Ms here, you know? How about I give you these? You give me the cheesesteak. No way. He's like, nah, oh, man, I can't do it. And then, like, <laughs> you know, they're cooking it. And then eventually, like, two minutes later, I go to pay. I'm like, all right, I got my card. He goes, Where's those M and M's? I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just throw him the M and M's. He gives me the cheesesteak. Yeah. We just call it a day. Keep in mind, it's like a fourteen dollars sandwich. It's like nothing. A cheap. dollar pack of M and M's. Watch Jersey Mike's launches this all out investigation tomorrow. Yeah, right. Like an all out investigation yeah, has been down. launched with Jersey Mike's. They're looking Mark for the culprit one. that traded peanut M and M's for a fourteen dollars <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Bobby, Fo- Bobby Fox, former employee, has a, has our inside story, and he's waiting for you now. If you're, if you're hungry, though, on Chill. shift, and, like, you can't take a lunch break, and there's, like, eight hours left, you might got to do what you got to do. Dude. Well, if it's eight it hours. Bad, dude. Yeah, yeah. I feel we used to fill up on those popcorn chips that were in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. The pops. I mean, but the thing is, I always paid for them. I always put pops. money in the register. Yeah. I didn't know how to actually 
enter in the item, but I would always put in like a, I'd pay the price. So every night the manager oh, that's closing is counting the jewelry. He's like, "Damn, how are we over a no, dollar again?" Yeah, dude. <laughs> seriously, it always seems so like. And the thing was, like, there was, not to, like, talk about this, but there was people stealing there, and there was people putting extra money in, so the drawer would always be, like, off, su- right? super off. Yeah, yeah, we so, helped it. I yeah, mean, we obviously helped it. Yeah, I mean, we no, paid for stuff, but. That's our boy, but, um, yeah, that, that was nuts. That's crazy. And what we, I, oh, yeah, just, just talking about customer service. And this is more of like a motivational thing just for everyone to think about. But Richie, you said how there's just you just want that one day where you can give it back to everybody. Yeah, and well, somebody was telling me they would love one day, like, just give it back. But. And the thing is... what's Hold on, not to cut you off. No, you're good. What's the worst you've seen a customer treat a, one of your employees at your store? All right, yeah, I like, like that. that like, oh, just, like, you were like, holy crap. Because at the, the car wash, I know people try to fight us a, a couple times. I don't crazy. know. It's just like, it's usually just like screaming, screaming oh. customers, like... It, like U-Haul is probably the worst clientele we uh-huh. have there, and it's like, dude, if we had a truck, we would give it to you, but it's not available, right? And they can't accept that. And I don't know. You want me to go out there and build a truck? I don't want right. to do that. Dude, like, <laughs> yeah, we had a lady come in the car one time, destroy the lobby because we wouldn't refund yeah. it. Yeah. Two bucks for tires. Uh huh. Destroy the lobby, dude. Two dollars. Swipe, Two dollars. Swipe the tables. Keep in mind, there's families and their little kids. She's like, f y'all, f you, f this. Like y'all suck. Dude, throwing everything, drinks out of the fridge, dude. Oh yeah, my but I mean, we've been talking a lot of bad on customers, but still, like, dude, you know you love seeing that one local that comes in. Oh, yeah. Time. There's so Maybe many. Maybe you can know, chat them up for an for, hour. For every bad customer, there's like 25 good oh, ones. Oh, for sure, so. for sure. Yeah, not to beg. so true. Some of the most generous people I met in my life were from that tip job, so yeah. I'll always be grateful for that. And unfortunately, the bad, like, obviously the bad ones stick out of my mind. Yeah. But yeah, there were so many regulars. Like, shout out if you were a regular at the car wash that hooked me up. Dude, it's, it's just so like sports. Like, that. one bad play, you know. You have 10 good plays. They're only going to remember that one right. bad play. Right. So, mm-hmm. it's the same concept. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's cutthroat, man. <laughs> and customer service is tough, but it teaches you a, a lot of lessons for real life. Because, mm-hmm. again, back to what we were saying with, uh, you wish you could just have one day. You could let it out. But people do let it out. And we all tend to to let it out but it's never okay to mm-hmm. like yeah. there's appropriate times to let things go and it's never at work it's and that goes for sports too so any of you guys who are out there and i used to have a problem with this too like in eighth grade i'd get out where it'd be oh, a I bad out i'd strike the, out we touched oh, on shit. officiating bad, a couple, yeah. uh, couple episodes ago officiating about being yeah. handling My, referees yeah, we, we did no not that. not you, that ties into it but like i would just throw my helmet and i carry on about something and it's just like, why would you do that? And I, my dad, that was the one thing my dad always used to yell at me for, was if I showed emotion in a negative fashion. Yeah. Right? And even even emo- emotion in a positive fashion, right? You're out there to prove to everyone it's else. It's going to be in a steady line. Yeah, that, that you can compete and that you can handle yourself under pressure in competition. And then even when you get into real life, if you do something back to a customer, you know, self-defense is one thing, but if you do something back to a customer <laughs> or you give it back, like, <laughs> right, I mean... Boy. That only that only hurts the business, or that only hurts the reputation of your team. And again, giving it yeah, giving it back to refs at an inappropriate time, or slamming your or slamming your helmet, or throwing because your like back. When you're working a tip job and it's like a group effort, like at a car wash, you got to remember your actions could affect the other three people's paychecks for the day. So like, even if you're disagreeing with a customer, like just do your best, just to just stay out of it, get out of your own head, and just let them say whatever. And if they're not, like, disrespectful to the point where they're, like, actually going to touch you or something, then just let it be and just remember you're representing something. Yeah, when you're splitting tips. Spe- yeah, yeah, right. yeah, especially when you're splitting tips and you don't get the key. Especially, like, I worked with, like, dudes who were, like, <coughs> broke, broke. So, like, I knew I had to perform, too, that day so they could help their family, like, single moms and uh, single dads, just, like, people who are grinding every day. So you got to keep that in mind. I'm a 15-year-old kid. Yeah, I can make mistakes. But my actions are going to affect. So I learned at a young age, like, you do everything 100%. You go all in. And, yeah, you give your best effort every day. Yeah, 100%. So I think this is a good this is a good segue to work into what one of the main topics of our talk tonight was going to be. As I guess I get, I like to call it, what was it, phase three, Brent? Phase three of the bros yeah, giving. To the moon. Of the, of the bros, moon giving, landing. bros giving moon What's landing or to the moon is uh, our introduction to the fitness world. Uh, and our vlogging. So a lot of what we want to do here at Bros Giving is we want to um, influence you guys. We want to do uh, fitness. We want to do a lot of stuff on social media involving that. And we want to vlog most importantly. And again, whatever you guys want to see, let us know. But what we wanted to talk about today is we're going to be starting 
a three month fitness challenge and we're going to document it. We're going to vlog it, put it on Instagram, put it on YouTube for the world to see. And this is really going to, we really want you guys to be able to get something out of it because mm -hmm. it's not an Instagram account where someone's already jacked. It's not a YouTube account where someone's already got it all together and they're kind of just out there kind of showing you what it is. So you guys are going to join along on our journey with four completely different dudes trying to accomplish four completely different different goals. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do right now is we wanted to go through some of those goals, tell you what we're thinking and what our plan is for the next three months. So who wants to go first? Anyone want to go first? I guess I can go first. Yeah, you yeah, start, 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 start it off. Start it off. So when it comes to my, I have a pretty good training age. I have a really great background in multiple different disciplines of training when it comes to, um, <laughs> of course, like being a division one athlete and stuff like that. The one thing cool. because the one thing that I really want to work on is I want to gain weight. I want to gain some muscle. So my goal for the next two and a half months or the next three months, wait, no, when, when's it? the end? end oh, it's only two months. Um, January 31st, yeah, New Year's okay. Eve. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve is going to be the last. So whatever that is, it's like two months. December 31st. December 31st. <laughs> two months and 10. All good, all good. Oh, gosh. Uh, two, two months and 11 and 12 days or whatever. Whatever yeah. it is. So by the end of that time, I want to have gained 10 pounds. And we're going to put up uh, body transformations, stuff like that, you know, if you guys want to. But that's definitely something that I'm probably going to do. So you guys will be able to see the progress with that. We're going to count calories. We're going to show you our workouts. I'm going to try and manipulate it because, again, I'm an exercise science major. I want to get my CSC and stuff like that. I want to see um, if I'm capable of actually making my own program and accomplishing that. Because especially if I'm going to be working with people, whether it's in a chiropractic setting and I'm helping them rehab or I'm just training people, helping you guys out or giving you guys advice, I want to prove to you guys that you know I'm capable of doing so. So that's my uh part of the plan that's my fitness goal you want to touch on a, a goal weight or what a goal weight oh yeah so i said 10 pounds right now i'm at 204 so or i know i'm at 203 so 213 and i fluctuate mm -hmm. between 202 and 204 so i think 213 is a solid bet i'm gonna shoot for 215 so if we fall a little bit short we're still hitting the goal yeah so i'm 510 182 i want to get a little bigger i think i'm gonna shoot up to 190 and then maybe cut back down to 180 again so put on that layer of fat and then build that back into muscle. I think that's the best way to do it. Cause I like my weight right now. I mm -hmm. think I think I could look a little better. Obviously, no, I could look a lot better. I don't mean to say it like bragging, but yeah, I want to jump up ten pounds. Probably cut back down then, and uh, yeah, that should be the goal for the, the two month journey. Right now, I'm five seven. I'm two eighteen. So anyone knows that knows like the benchmarks. I'm definitely overweight. Uh, I would like to lose like 10 pounds, maybe get like around like 28, 208, 209 to start, and then maybe lose some more weight after that. In terms of working out, I usually do work out a decent amount, but one week I'll work out three days, and the next week I'll work out four days, and then the next week I'll work out two days. I want to get on at least a set schedule and work out at least five or six days a week uh, for the entirety of like the two months that we're going to mm -hmm. do this. And... I might transition into some uh, lighter weights to kind of tone out a li little bit, but I still want to get stronger and do heavier weights as well. What about you, Rich? So right now, uh, 5'11", 208, right before we weighed in here. Um, would like to try to cut down probably to like 195 to start because I usually fluctuate yeah, yeah, between yeah. like 204, 208. Yeah, you're always going to have like a five-pound yeah. fluctuation so, so, um, in that range. But yeah, definitely get consistent. Um, hope you know. I'll talk to CJ maybe about setting up a, a plan. Maybe word <laughs> <laughs> breaking news. Maybe I sabotage but, uh, him. No, I definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, you want to eat a lot of donuts? And yeah, yeah. only lift twice a week. That'd be good. <laughs> but yeah, definitely excited don't to get started it. though. Word. Yeah, it'll be so. What's your? Do you have a specific goal as in the weight that you want to be? Yeah, or how uh, your body? How you about, want your body? Probably below? about one ninety five. But honestly, I'm not too worried about the weight you know the numbers just more about the actual right. transformation yeah. and how, yeah. I, how i feel and depending on what plan you want to do we can always just take some of the numbers at the beginning of that plan and then incorporate them into the end so whether it's a timed run vo2 max anything like that that we can actually yeah. take i mean vo2 max I gotta would be really tough but <laughs> i gotta figure out what i want to do with the foot <laughs> oh yeah your foot <laughs> yeah, how's so, that going i mean is it, that better it's not really painful when i walk or anything but uh I don't, know, I don't know if I'm ready to run yet. That was nasty looking yeah, when you did dude. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, we, just to fill you guys in, we were playing basketball two weekends ago at ESU, and Richie, like, we played five games, 
And towards the end Probably of the... Probably about like the f- third, fourth game. It was like the four, end of the fourth game. All of a sudden, Richie came down and heard a pop in his foot. Oh. Right in the arch. That yeah. was good. Whole bottom of the foot's bruised. So he's got something better now. torn, slightly torn down there or bruised or whatever. Who knows? But he did He did finish out the rest of that next game. Shout so, out dude, yeah, you true. Shout you out you pushed through, man. The adrenaline was going. <laughs> Those we games did. get intense. Yeah. And we won, and we won we the won, series, we won the series on the day. Too. We mm-hmm. took it We did. And I... Sorry, guys. It was literally bros giving, but I picked Mariana instead of Bobby. And I, really, and I felt really, and I felt really bad about so that. But we had a good, we had a good two-person game a, going on on the right side of the rim. Sense, it was it was fun, yeah. We were doing so. a replace, a pick and replace, which was pretty good, guys. Yeah. By the way, if you want to challenge us to basketball, hit us up. Please do. Dude. Please hit up our squad. No, for, you, real, for real. You want to play four v four? You're going to get us four. You want five v five? It's going to be us and Mariana. Mariana. <laughs> Probably yeah. So that's if you, if you want to play us, man. Like I mean, we play at ESU, not that readers crap. And we'll feel, yeah, yeah, ESU's got the best courts, man. They got the breakaway rims. And yeah, that's where yeah dude, I just I just five. like playing ball though. So if any of y'all are just going to play ball, hit us up. We're looking. We're always looking for opportunity to go and to go and ball out. We're, we're Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, I think that just about wraps it up. So thank you guys uh, for joining in again. There's gonna be a lot more content coming out in terms of fitness and in terms of lifestyle. So we're super excited and for that. And hit us up too. Like if you want to go on your own journey with it and send us pictures in, or if you want motivation or tips or anything, yeah, like, just hit us idea. up. Let us know. You hit us up right on that those. Bros Giving account or any of our personal accounts too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, guys. And again, any topics that you guys want to see on future shows, you guys got questions that you want to ask and, yeah. you, and you need some advice. Or, again, you want to be on the show, hit us up. Hit us in our DMs on Twitter, mm-hmm. Instagram. Uh, we don't have a Snapchat, so no Snapchat. Or leave a comment or in the yeah, YouTube section. Or personal snaps if you have it, and, but. and, guys, big announcement. We are on Spotify now. We're working on getting Apple Music, but the big thing is we're on Spotify, mm-hmm. so you no longer have to sit through an entire YouTube video. Put it on the car. Having to keep, keep clicking your phone so it stays on. So we're on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Look out for that. Uh, releasing that Day in the Life video I was talking about. That's going to be dropping uh, tonight. And it's Tuesday, so I'm going to put that out tonight. We're going to be vlogging this week, and sorry about having to push back our guest, Matt Breen. He uh, has some stuff in midterms, but he's going to be on next week, and we're super, super excited for that episode, oh, yeah. and it's going to be good. So thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. Make sure to tune in next week. Give us a like, comment, subscribe on the YouTube video, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.